Messy. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Directed by one-time stuntman Nick McKinless, we are talking Take Cover. And this one stars Scott Adkins and Alice Eve. And I would say this is a mix of John Wick meets Leon the Professional with a sprinkling of The Hangover. Sound intriguing? What's the story? Well, it focuses on two lifelong friends who have grown up in the military together and they are a sniper and spotter team. And we start the movie on a particular mission where Scott Adkins, who is the sniper of the duo, uh, accidentally injures someone on a job. And he kind of feels maybe it's time to retire now. And he's kind of has a little bit of a ball busting relationship with his partner, his lifelong friend. So he decides he's going to jack it in. And he works for Alice Eve's character, who is his kind of handler. And he agrees to go on one last mission before retiring. And they end up in a luxury apartment, uh, like a penthouse in some type of sort of hotel. And um, there's a couple of kind of female masseuses that come up and to entertain them. But they discover things are going to get real bad in this kind of glass fishbowl of an apartment when there are snipers on the roof to take them out and other kind of enemies coming to, uh, well, do bad things. What will happen? You'll have to watch the movie and find out. So let's discuss. So there has been this kind of trend now of stuntmen uh, kind of moving up into the, you know, the the directing space. Chad Tuchelsky, Sam Hardgreaves, for example. And this kind of John Wick-esque style of action movies has become very popular of recent years. And this is a kind of another entry into that uh, genre, albeit a kind of somewhat um, lower budget version, I would suggest. But nonetheless, I would say it is a uh, contemporary of that type of movie. Uh, why do I say The Hangover? Uh, because of the buddy-buddy element here where the sniper, played by Adkins and his partner, the spotter, uh, have this kind of banter. The first kind of good 20 minutes or so are these two effectively mess and around and, you know, doing kind of jokes on each other and it kind of has this sort of comedic kind of buddy vibe to it that you sort of saw in the kind of the hangover movies and they got this big luxury kind of hotel you know you know where i'm going with this but so there's there's a kind of a, an element to that so it's, it makes for a somewhat of a interesting action movie then this movie is primarily based on a sniper style of action movie so the, the it isn't wall-to-wall -wall action there's a lot of sneaking around trying to avoid snipers trying to become getting a good position to be a sniper so it's has a little bit of its own flavor to it um there is good banter between our two kind of male leads as this kind of uh, lifelong uh, buddy duo of sniper and spotter which i think genuinely kind of gets the characters feeling like they, they would, have, would have been friends, primarily because they're effectively insulting each other almost all the time, which is kind of what uh, a lot of guys will do. Uh, so it has a sort of, they have a good kind of chemistry, a good kind of relationship. Um, and it's an interesting idea. It's effectively, the movie has a kind of, an 80% um, of its runtime is in this one sort of, penthouse of this hotel and you've kind of got a 10 percent other other locations and either's kind of end of the movie so it's an interesting kind of movie it, it does carve out a little bit of its own identity in somewhat of a crowded space scott adkins is fast becoming i think the kind of the um b-level action star you know that once was michael dudikoff in the kind of the 80s and things like this and Gary Daniels and Mark DeCascos, 
Scott Adkins it has, has filled that position of modern years as a sort of straight to DVD, straight to VOD action hero. And uh, he's a very likeable sort of character in this one. I actually thought his relationship with this kind of the female lead uh, was quite good. And, um, you know, a, a, again, a, a somewhat of an interesting kind of dynamic. There is quite a, a lot of visual panache here. Um, you know, for obviously for a director who primarily works in stunts, you, you know, you, there's, yes, there's lots of kind of stunts and impressive kind of fight sequences, but there's actually some kind of uh, visual sort of stylings that kind of going on here as well. And um, Alice Eve's character is kind of quite an interesting, sort of an aloof uh, sort of handler for these people who they mainly kind of talk to kind of over the phone, but has an interesting kind of role in the movie as well. Um, the set pieces, the action set pieces, I think it could, could have quite well had, as you'd probably expect, uh, coming from, uh, you know, an ex-stunt stunt performer being directed by, by him. And it's not just kind of sniping, we get a good amount of hand-to-hand -hand and sort of close quarter fights as well. So what doesn't work in this movie, the pace is a little bit up and down, I think, because of the nature of this movie being somewhat of a, a sniper-based movie primarily, there are elements here where it's just people kind of talking behind settees and things like this. And one of the things I was kind of a little bit perplexed with, now, I, I'm not a sniper, but when people are hiding behind soft furnishings, and you know that they're hiding behind soft furnishings, surely you can probably shoot through them, I would imagine especially with a high-powered rifle. There's scenes here where, you know, our protagonists are hiding behind chairs, sofas, with, you know, nothing else really between them, and somehow this is cover for them, you know. But this leads me to a larger issue where I think there is some silly elements to this movie. Um, now, I don't want to give away spoilers, but... There, there's just some things here that, I don't know, are a little bit silly. Um, there's a line of dialogue by Alice Eve's character, which is would be so amateurish uh, had this been a real situation. It's just, it, it's, it, it really is quite silly. There's some other elements here where uh, characters seem just to put themselves in harm's way and in the line of sight for dramatic reasons. Um, it doesn't really feel like this movie has realism on the forefront of its kind of uh, agenda here, shall we say. Some of the kind of the action sequences, I think, say, border on the little farcical at times, and the believability is very sort of stretched. The movie primarily is, it takes place in this penthouse of this hotel, which is this one location movie, and as such, it can feel a little bit stagnant at times because we are just focusing on this particular location. And although the movie tries to have sparkling kind of dialogue, it doesn't really succeed in that matter. There are some elements here that I kind of liked. I sort of liked some, liked some of the kind of the relationships between the characters. But to be honest with you, you know, great dialogue. This movie is, is rather lacking and I have to be honest with you. And some of the characters seem a little cartoonish and sort of silly, I have to say. They're a little bit overly cliched. Um, the budget does show through, particularly when there is involving things like uh, green screen and things like that. Uh, digital effects don't seem particularly sort of uh, realistic. And it's one of these films which relies a little bit too much on macho kind of stereotypes and stuff. And, you know, lines of dialogue again and, and, and things. Yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag. I'll give it a, I'll give it a six out of ten because it's the elements here that make it somewhat original compared to a lot of straight to VOD movies makes it worth a watch. But I don't think it really rises too much above, uh, just above average, if you ask me. Six out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think? Of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to you next time. Bye for now.